Hello and welcome, Kim Knight here from Dow Health Qigong. In this video I'd like to give you a brief introduction to what is Qigong and what are the benefits of it and also to briefly share my story of how I came across Qigong and how it helped me to recover from years of chronic illness. So first of all let's start with the word Qigong. Now, a lot of people have heard, well, have not heard of Qigong, but many people have heard of Tai Chi. And the way I describe it is that Tai Chi is a form of Qigong. We could say that Qigong is more like an umbrella term, and Tai Chi sits underneath that, that umbrella. It, it's like a subsection, if you like, of Qigong. So, let's look at these two words, Qi and Gong. First of all, the word Gong means to cultivate. So we're, we're working on, we're cultivating something. And in Qigong, what we're cultivating is our Qi. Now, a lot of people will, will if they know anything about Qigong, they, they often will equate the word Qi to energy. And that is part of it. It's, it's like our life force energy, uh, which, which sits in our life battery inside of us, charging our whole being. But there's a lot more to Qi than just energy, because what it also includes is information. It is literally the information that sits in our body at every level of our being. So that means physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually. Uh, energy that makes up our being and Qi is the smallest quantum of of matter that has been able to be isolated in the universe so if we think of our body we're, we're an organism that is our totality of our body we are an, an organism which is made up of organs and bones and tissues and all those organs and bones and tissues are actually themselves made up of cells. So that's our cellular level of our being. And those cells themselves are made up of molecules and atoms and everything, you know, lots more than that as well. But if we go smaller, if we go much, much smaller than that, we get to what we call the quantum level. And this is more the level where Qi is operating. So we can say it's the, the smallest quantum level of matter that is in physical existence. And actually there are many different types of Qi, but just for the purpose of this video we're going to be just talking about Qi in general. So we have Qi which is energy and information. And my first Qigong teacher used to describe it as Qi which is impregnated with information. So back to the information part, what is this information? Well, as I said, it's, it's everything in our body physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So if we look at from a mental perspective, it is our thoughts, our, our conditioning, our beliefs, our patterning, um, our memories, uh, every experience we've, we've ever had. So it's everything that correlates to what is going on at a mental level in our being and also at an emotional level. So that will also include our emotions. Because from the moment we're born, and even from in the womb, when we have an emotion tr um, generated inside our body, and, and emotions tend to be generated spontaneously, automatically, in response to what is going on in our life, as well as what is going on in our thoughts, is that when, when, an, energy, when an emotion is uh, generated, that emotion is energy, and it affects our whole being and it is a form of chi. And we also have our spiritual side of us, um, which in Qigong is often referred to as our Shen. And then we have, of course, we have our physical body. So the wonderful thing about Qigong, so I don't want to get this too complicated, <laughs> the wonderful thing about Qigong is that it works on all these levels simultaneously. And just by doing the exercises, our body is so brilliantly intelligent, we don't have to sit there and go, okay, well, I need 30% of it to go to the physical part and 30% to go to the emotional part. And, well, I've got a lot of work to do on, you know, mental, so I'll send 50% there or whatever. And that's more than 100% already, isn't it? So we don't have to think that. All we have to do is to do the practices um, and, and then our, our infinitely intelligent body will direct the chi that we're generating and also 
clearing to the right places in our body. So that's the wonderful thing about Qigong. So let me share a little bit, before I go on to explaining some of the benefits, let me share a little bit about how I came across Qigong. Basically, I had been ill for many years. I'd had clinical depression for about 10 years. And then that developed into chronic fatigue syndrome a few years after I was first um, diagnosed with clinical depression. And I was unable to work. And I left my job. Um, and was for the next five years, I just was literally sitting at home, just wondering how to get well and trying many, many different therapies. Altogether, I've tried now, back then it was about a, over 100, now I've tried over 200 or up to 200 therapies. So <laughs> I've really tried a lot of therapies. But at that stage, before I came across Qigong, I had been unwell at home, not working for about five years, trying many, many different therapies and, and really starting to learn about myself, but not really understanding what is really creating this problem. And at some point when I'd had another crash and was just feeling like, God, is this ever going to end? I just had this thought that crossed my mind of, well, what if I'm not going to get better? And this is very common, by the way, for people who have a chronic illness. We, we, we try this and we try that and it goes on and on and on. And eventually the mind starts to think, well, you know, I'm not getting better. So am I ever going to get better? And that's what, what, what happened for me. And then I thought, well, what would you do if you weren't going to live very long? And I know that's a bit of a, you know, a serious sobering thought but when you're in that sort of situation you tend to think that and anybody probably who's who has either had a chronic illness or is chronically ill that thought may have crossed their mind because after all we are human <coughs> and we have a finite life um, it's just that most of the time we don't think you know that that ending will come soon so I thought well what would I want to do and I thought well I'd actually like to do this trip around the world that I've been dreaming of and I never thought that I would do it. It was just like this pipe dream uh, in my head, but I've been collecting brochures. I had a file, filing system full of brochures of places I wanted to visit. And I just thought, well, what's stopping you? And there, apart from being ill, there was nothing stopping me. Um, fortunately, at the time um, I was, I had the finances to, to fund that. And well, I sold my house and um, and I went off traveling around the world. And even though I wasn't ill and I kept on having to crash um, every so often, um, I was able to go off traveling. And um, quite, I, I still was searching. I, I went around the states and I went to to Central America and to Europe and I was trying this therapy and that therapy and. Towards the end of my trip, I was about 11 months into my 12 month round the world ticket. I had crashed again. I was in Central America. I was in Costa Rica, I think. And then I went to Guatemala and I was literally hardly able to move. And I just had to stop and rent a place for a month. And, um, and while I was there, you know, as fortune happens, I heard of a treatment, a Qigong treatment, and in, in uh, the States, and which was actually a body therapy called Qin Etzang. Um, but really, as I found out later, I was drawn to much more than just Qin Etzang. But I, I was just drawn for some inexplicable reason, I was drawn to go and find out more about this. So I, I, my, I booked to go to LA on my way back to New Zealand. I literally only had a month left on my ticket. And I got on the plane and got to actually San Francisco and was very, very ill, just could hardly get out of bed and managed to crawl to an appointment to see this Qigong practitioner who became my first teacher, Jill Marin. And I had a treatment with him, which was life changing. And during that treatment, I discovered that one of the major reasons that I had become ill was because I wasn't dealing with my emotions and because emotions are energy. They, that energy, because I wasn't dealing with it and, it and energy cannot be destroyed, it can be transformed, which is what we learn to do in Qigong, but it can't be destroyed. And so I was blocking, unbeknownst to me, I was blocking a heap of energy, using a heap more energy to hold that energy blocked. 
and the end result of that was I was absolutely exhausted for no apparent reason but that was the reason and there were other reasons as well I'd been overdoing it pushing myself too hard driving myself uh, very 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 stressed and according to Harvard University at least 80% of illness is is attributable to stress and I would personally say more than that um, so I was doing life wrong and one of the things we learn in Qigong is to follow what we call the laws of life and the laws of health and we have to learn what these laws are and Qigong teaches us what these laws are and it's all about learning to live in harmony with nature because we are part of nature but we've forgotten that so for example nature has seasons you know and seasons we have summer where we're we, you know where nature is busy and all the flowers are blooming but then in winter all the leaves drop off and all the sap goes into the center of the tree and the tree stops to regenerate for the next season but you see most humans in the western world are not doing that they're just they're in summer season all year round and, and it's just impossible to to live healthily like that because we're not designed to live like that we have to have balance so anyway so I, I went for this uh, treatment it was a completely life-changing experience a major what I would call turning point for me and 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 then as I was leaving to go out the door I noticed a brochure um, for his classes and and I inquired what, what it was about and he said, well, I teach this, obviously, and I teach certain meditations which help you to clear emotional energy from the physical body, to clear that emotional energy out of the cells. And I was immediately, it was like, I just knew that was what I had to do. So that was the start of my journey with Qigong. And I did many years, I did uh, eight years training with Gilles, traveling to the States and uh, learning a lot of Taoist meditations for clearing emotional energy which simultaneously then clears the physical toxins from the body and also the body work treatment Chinetsang which I used to provide but now I work at more of mind body level and also other Qigong practices and so I studied these practices which were from the Universal Healing Tao system school of Qigong and then in 2009 I came across Master Wan Su and started training with him and started learning Jinen Qigong and studied Jinen Qigong with him for a few years until he created his own system called Wang Gong. So on my website you're going to see there's three different schools of Qigong which I refer to um, because those are the three schools that I've trained in. And mainly now I'm practicing Wang Gong which is a beautiful Qigong system and that's mainly what I teach. So that is my journey and uh, so that was in 2000 that I started practicing learning Qigong and by 2006 it was a slow journey because I'd made myself pretty ill. Um, it, that was a turning point and I was like irrevocably better at that point but I still had work to do on myself. So this is a big lesson for most people to learn is that if they've really ground themselves down to exhaustion and chronic illness then it's it's not that often that people are just going to turn around in one day or one week and 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 that is one of the problems with our society again is this instant fix mentality of thinking that if we've spent years sort of abusing ourselves that you know we can get better in a day and it doesn't usually work like that although the great news is it doesn't usually take as long to get well as it took to get ill because our body is the ultimate self-healing machine and when we give it what it needs which is this following the laws of life and the following the laws of health and we bring ourselves back into balance and we bring ourselves back into this calm relaxed state which I'm going to talk about in another video then um, then our health restores because we our body is the ultimate self-healing machine and so I continued to 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 train and, and, and get better and obviously now um, well and teaching Qigong so let's look at some of the benefits and I can tell you this is just a smattering um, like a, a taster if you like of the benefits 
it would be easier to be totally honest if we were to say what are the benefits and what aren't the benefits of Qigong. I would say that it would be easier to, to and shorter to say what are, are not the benefits, you know, are there non-benefits. And that list would be very short because there would be nothing on it. So, but, but the way I like to look at things is to break things down into physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. So from a physical level, what Qigong does is, if we have illness, it helps us to reverse illness. So of course, you know, a lot of people are looking for answers to either a chronic illness or they just may have some aches and pains that they just don't know what's causing them. So Qigong will help to reverse illness. And then once we've done that, it will help us or, or, or allow us to maintain our health, which is very important. And interestingly enough, in ancient China, when you went to your doctor, you only went to your doctor so that they could keep you well. And you only paid your doctor if you didn't stay well and you became ill, because that meant the doctor, the ch you know, your, your medical practitioner had not been doing their job properly. So really what we're talking about here is preventative medicine. So it's, it's prevention. And I think there's a saying, prevention is better than cure, right? This is not the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, although it can be used for that, but it's about, yeah, let's, let's maintain our health. And then once we've either reversed illness or we're maintaining our health, then let's optimize our health. And one of the major benefits of uh, Qigong um, which is why a lot of Qigong practitioners tend to look younger than their actual age, is that it does reverse the clock. So let's look at some of these benefits from a physical level. So as I said, we, we prevent illness, but also we can prevent injury. Because when our qi is flowing smoothly in our body, and also we are very mindful because Qigong works also at this mental level to become uh, more mindful of what is going on, then we're going to actually, we're going to prevent injury because a lot of injury is due to us not being in the moment at the time the injury happens. Our mind is often somewhere else. Or say, for example, we're lifting a heavy box and our mind is not on the lifting of the box. Our mind is, what am I going to have for dinner tomorrow? Or maybe we just had an argument with somebody and we're going over that in our mind and we're not paying enough attention to our body and how we need to lift that box properly. And then we can easily hurt ourselves. And it's a very interesting thing, by the way, if you do injure yourself, so you cut yourself or you, you I don't know, you just do something inadvertently to, to injure yourself, um, it's very interesting to, if it, one can track immediately, because one has to ask it straight away, what, what was I thinking right then? Because there's often a connection. Anyway, so we prevent illness and we can prevent inju injury. And it, has a, it, it works a lot on loosening and maintaining um, limberness, that's not even a word really, is it? But suppleness of the joints and the spine. So. They say, the Taoists say that, the, that we have 24 treasures, which are our, our vertebrae and our spine, and that our, our youthness will equate to the limberness of our spine. So the more supple our spine is, the younger we're going to stay. So freeing up and maintaining joint mobility and suppleness is very very important and also it helps to keep our tendons and our ligaments um, and also our muscles very soft and supple and of course it works on the organs and so we have these major organs inside of us you know the heart the lungs the liver the gallbladder the small intestine the large intestine etc etc and these organs are what are responsible for keeping us alive and we know that because we can live without a limb, but we can't live without an organ apart from the spleen. So our organs are very, very important. And in Qigong, we have what are called meridians. Uh, well, not in Qigong, I mean every human body has meridians. And meridians are these, like, these rivers of energy inside of us uh, that carry our qi through them. So we have these many qi rivers, and we need to keep these rivers free-flowing because it's like if you have a block in the flow of a stream and it gets blocked, then A, the water 
downstream there's no there's no water anymore because it's all dammed up upstream and also that water upstream gets very stagnant so when you go for example and have acupuncture what is happening is that they're freeing up these rivers of energy or chi inside your body um, so that chi can get to the right place at the right time and move between the organs and and all the tissues and cells etc and so the difference I suppose you could say between acupuncture and qigong is that in acupuncture somebody is doing it for you but in qigong you're learning to do it for yourself so yes supple very important to have suppleness suppleness like a baby and also big time what we're doing is we're going to be clearing toxins so the body tends to store a lot of toxins and through clearing our chi channels and our energy channels um, that helps to to move the toxins out of the body so that's just a, a smither smattering of what is going on at a physical level so let's look at how it can benefit emotionally so this is where I started myself um, yes I had physical chronic fatigue but the fatigue was because I wasn't managing my energy and in particular my emotional energy because emotions are energy and so we can clear our energy and the interesting thing uh, our emotions rather and the interesting thing about emotions is that they relate to different organs so different emotions will gravitate and be stored in different organs and for example the liver we say I was livid with anger right that's where the word livid comes from and so anger really uh, affects the the liver and that emotional toxin gets stored in the liver and the interesting thing about the liver is the liver from a biological physical perspective is uh, is all about clearing the well one of the one of its major functions is to clear the toxins from the body and to, to store and clear the most toxic toxins so for example when people are uh, alcoholics and drinking a lot of alcohol then that toxin will affect the liver and be stored in the liver and not just the liver I mean the rest of the body too but you know majorly the liver has I'm pointing here because that's where the liver is um, and but every tissue and cell in the body has also has a metaphysical function right so our anger is stored in our liver and in my training some of my trainings I teach all you know and in Qigong we learn okay which which organs uh, are affected by different emotions and, so, and and which and how can we clear those emotions from the organs and so ultimately when we do this what we're going to find is we're going to, ex to experience a lot more happiness because we cannot be happy if we have a load of anger and fear and sadness and worry and um, you know disappointment and hurt all these sort of core emotions we, we cannot be happy if all those emotions are sitting in our body and the way we describe it in Qigong is that it's when, when we do these clearing exercises the the Sun is always there but the clouds is in the way of the sun shining and so when we do the qigong what we're doing is we're clearing away the clouds of the anger and the fear and the and, and, and the sadness and the hurt and 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 all these this negativity whether it's you know emotional or physical stuff and then the sun can shine through and we can actually finally experience what what is called the virtuous energy that is already inside of us and the virtuous energy is, is stuff like peace, gentleness, generosity, kindness, courage, respect, humility, uh, gratitude, compassion. All this is already inside of us. But if we have too much other negative stuff still there, we can't experience it. So that's one of the major benefits of Qigong, obviously, is, to, is so that we become a happier version of ourselves and from a mental perspective we're going to be able to um, improve our clarity and our creativity and I can't remember the last one what, what I put there clarity our oh, focus so we're going to 
what happens is when we clear our body and we clean up our chi inside our body, all of a sudden our, our mind is going to be so much clearer and we're going to have the ideas popping in and we're going to have clarity and we're going to be able to focus. So for example, when people first start learning a meditation, they, might, they may find that they can only focus for like maybe a few seconds or a few minutes uh, and then their mind wanders. And then as you continue with the practices, your focus gets stronger and stronger and stronger and you can hold a point of focus for longer. So a lot of um, mental uh, benefits, which is obviously great for, you know, for work <laughs> and for, for life in general. And it increases productivity um, and, and, and helps us to be more productive in our life. And lastly, spiritually, is, is what it helps to do is to develop our intuition, which is really our inner tutor and our inner guidance. Because we have all the answers inside of us, but we have to be able to go inwards to find them. And one of the main things that you're going to find with Qigong is that a lot of the practices, or most of them really, um, are, we, we bring our senses inwards, we bring ourselves inwards. Even if we're doing moving um, postures, the, the, the eyes are closed and we're bringing our attention inwards. Because we, we lose so much energy through our senses, through our mouth and our eyes and our ears. Uh, through listening, through watching, through talking, we lose a lot of our chi. And so Qigong teaches us to bring our attention inwards, which also then helps us to get more in touch with inside of us to, to really hear what they call the still small voice inside, to hear our own inner guidance. We don't need to keep looking outside um, and going to tarot readers or whatever it is to get answers. The answers are all inside of us. We just have to get still enough to, to listen to them and to hear them. And of course that will also help us to make sure that we're on purpose and on track in our life. Because we have to get in touch with ourselves and connect with ourselves in order to know what is my purpose. And in order to know my purpose we have to clear all this. We have to clear our emotional baggage and we have to, to clear our, our old beliefs and our old conditioning and our old patterning and we have to take care of our physical well-being and when we do that then our purpose becomes clearer and clearer so qigong as i said at the beginning just when i started is you know this list could be could fill a book the list of benefits of qigong um, and you know, there's a lot, there, there are a lot of benefits to a lot of different therapies, but what I found with Qigong is that it's a very, what I call, all-encompassing uh, method and modality. And in particular, the Wangong Qigong, which I'm currently, you know, studying and a practitioner and a teacher of, it, it's a part of a whole system called Ren Shui, Human Life Science, which is about the science of of being a human being and how to evolve ourselves into the best version of ourselves because we're here to to evolve ourselves and so ultimately what we could say is qigong if we were going to put it in a nutshell is that it's it's good for our health it's good for our happiness and it allows us to experience and create success in our life so if that sounds like you, then do check out my workshops, retreats and online programs and I look forward to sharing more with you.